Hi, love tribe. It's Tracy back with the monthly Zodiacs. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to my Geminis. Um, hey, guys, it is Gemini season. We're going to take a look at love and romance. We're certainly going to look at any messages that spirit wants to bring through um, about personal development, personal growth, job, business. If it's obvious, I'll read about it, um, but I focus most of my attention on relationships. And so we're going to do this today. I do apologize for the setup. I've been using the phone for the overhead view, and I broke the little clip on my tripod. And so I was putting it off because I was going to order one, and I'm just not going to put it off. We're going to go ahead and get these done. We're going to bang them out. I'm so grateful for you guys. If you're new here, welcome. Um, this is our own little, you know, love tribe over here at TR's Tarot Talk, 1111. And um, hopefully you will find um, the messages that you need, the help that you need. If you're on a high level soulmate or twin flame journey or sacred soulmate ascension journey with a partner, um, and you're interested, there will be extendeds for this. Um, actually, anybody who's interested, there will be extendeds. But if you uh, resonate with being a high-level soulmate, make sure you check out Patreon at the 1111 tier, because over there we're doing a lot of shadow work, a lot of journaling, a lot of self-development in order to prepare for union. Um, and just to get the extended, uh, it's 444 a month, and you can join that and you don't have to rent any videos or anything you get every single one of the 12 zodiacs every first of the month to cross watch to your soul's content so if you guys would like to book a personal private reading i have some specials running in the description box below um i'm trying to do some fundraising to go to vegas to officiate rich lop and leah's wedding um, most of my returning clients or viewers know about that but there's all kinds of good stuff down there so go check it out okay without further ado um i'm going to get into your reading and hopefully if it resonates you'll know in the first few minutes and if it doesn't go cross watch okay there will be an extended in patreon which is a monthly subscription it's listed below it's 444 that's all it costs a month for less than a mcdonald's coffee well one of their you know mccafe coffees you can basically get all the extendeds okay so let's get into this gemini happy birthday i'm excited today i don't know why it's been a very productive day for me and uh i was a little bummed that i broke the clip on my my candle blew out too i've got the window open i broke the clip on my Hold on, guys. I can't talk and chew bubble gum at the same time. I like to have a candle lit when I do my readings. I might have to move it away from the window. There we go. Let's put it over here. There. Maybe the wind won't blow it out. Uh, anyhow, let's just get into your reading. I'm prattling as usual. I'm really excited. I, I've had a good day. Let's just put it that way. All right, so we've got all your oracles as normal. This isn't going to be as long or as in-depth as last month's because last month we were dealing with a lot of um, astrology, right? We had the eclipses. We had Jupiter, or I'm um, sorry, uh, Venus and Mars. We had a bunch of stuff going on. Pretty much always have a bunch of stuff. We are in the Great Awakening, so... Um, let's just see what you got. Your bottom of the deck energy is the Six of Pentacles. I really like this, especially if it's in finances. Um, if it's in finances, it's it's leveling up. It's generosity. It's possibly getting help from others or giving help to others. It's feeling balanced and secure financially. And the bottom of the deck for your clarifying deck is the Star. So, you know, that's, that can be public recognition. It can, um, it can be a leveling up. It's, it's a healing. It's a hopeful, a wish fulfillment card. 
So these are general energies. We're going to get more specific here. This top row is your message. The bottom row is clarifying the message. And we have all these oracles. So let's get into the reading. We have King of Swords with Ambition. And I'm going to show you each card because I'm not using the overhead camera. We have Regeneration with the world. We have endurance with the seven of wands. And last, we have the knight of cups. Ooh, we like that in a relationship reading, don't we? With proposals. Okay, let's get your clarifiers. So clarifying the King of Swords is the Eight of Cups. Hmm. Clarifying the world is the Seven of Swords. I already see where this is going. Clarifying the Seven of Wands, we have the Seven of Cups. So we now have 777, which could have some real significance for you. If you want to look that up. And clarifying the proposal, which is the Knight of Cups, is the Page of Swords. Hmm. All right. I'm going to get your oracles out, too. We have passion. A magnetic and seductive quality surrounds you at present. Enjoy it. We have adventure. I will ride the tide. Change me, divine beloved, into one who rides the tide happily, trusting where I'm being led, even when everything doesn't make sense yet. This is a new deck, by the way, that I purchased off of Hay House. I was excited to use it with you. It's called the Divine Beloved Oracle Cards by Tasha Silver. Next, we have Emotional desert, inactivity, and isolation. Hold on, I made a mess. It's number 11, by the way, master number 11. We have forgiveness. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. We have awakening. Both people in this connection are undergoing spiritual transformation. And last but not least, we have engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. All right, so let's just break this down. So I really like this because we've got the star, the six of pentacles, and engagement. And the knight of cups is a really good card. So what I see here is I see that you, I really feel like this King of Swords energy is representative of you at the current moment. <clears throat> you're in your masculine energy, whether you're a female or masculine, it doesn't matter. It's not gender specific, it's an energy. But there seems to be an attitude here of walking away from this situation with whoever this person is. Somebody here walked away. If this isn't your energy, it could be your person's energy. But there seems to be a, a, a distancing, a walking away of, you know, putting some emotional, because Eight of Cups is about emotions, an emotional distance between the two of you, okay? With the Seven of Swords clarifying the world, it's because there was some tomfoolery going on maybe some dishonesty or or running. Because a lot of times I look at the Seven of Swords as my runner card. There's fear around commitment, fear around judgment. Um, usually a person doesn't become dishonest or, you know, Seven of Swords is all about cheating, lying, manipulating, um, but it's also fear-driven. It's fear-based. And so it just feels to me like somebody was not treating you the way they should treat you. 
Um, they weren't showing up in their, you know, in integrity. Let's just put it that way. They weren't showing up in an integral way. And so, you know, it looks to me like somebody in this situation walked away in order to end a cycle of the seven of swords, you know, let's just end this cycle. I, I'm not really wanting this behavior anymore. It's, it's an empowering thing. It's, it's, you know, it says change me divine beloved into one who rides the tide happily, trusting where I'm being led, even when everything doesn't make sense yet. Um, so this is, is an energy of doing just that, of walking away, trusting that this is not or was not going in a way that was productive. All right. With two sevens here, because we got three sevens on the board. Sevens for me are, you know, that reflection, that, that place that we end up where we're deciding how we want to present ourselves, our next move, right? So both people, spirit wants you to know there's a lot of passion here. It is reciprocal. This person has as much passion for you as you do for them. But it seems to me like whether you meant to do it or not, you kind of taught this person a lesson about how to show up in an energy of recipro reciprocity um, by putting up healthy boundaries, right? King of Swords is masculine energy, but if it was the Queen of Swords, it doesn't matter. Swords energy is, I in the light attribute, it's I do what's right. I do what's integral. I, I make good decisions, have good boundaries. With the Eight of Cups, it's I'm not participating. I'm going to withdraw emotionally and do what is best for me. And then the world is the ending of a cycle. It's completing a cycle that you probably repeated with this person many times, whereby they didn't show up in a way that honored you as a person or honored the connection, which obviously is reciprocal because we have both people awakening in this situation. And with the emotional desert, I think this is how you made your person feel. Now, remember in these readings, it's it's a general energy. So you can absolutely be the reciprocating or the receiving end. You could be on the receiving end of this. Somebody else could have cut you off. But my guess is since you're the one that's seeking advice, it was probably them that wasn't showing up in their highest and best form. And so you just took matters into your own hand. You ended a cycle of tomfoolery or, or of dishonesty or um, lies or, or just secrets. It doesn't even have to be as blatant as a lie. It, it could be somebody who is the runner in a relationship because of fear, fear of being hurt. So they run first, or they cheat first, or they self-sabotage. Um, but it definitely is a cycle that somebody in this situation did not want to see happen anymore. And so they withdrew. And that leaves the Seven of Wands with the Seven of Cups. It's feeling shut out is what it feels like. It feels like one person here put up these healthy boundaries and, and has a guarded stance, right? They're guarding themselves from the seven of swords energy. And I don't know why, but this clarifier feels like the other person to me. It feels like the other person now is confused because maybe in the past you didn't have this healthy boundary because you've been going through a transformation, a spiritual transformation, learning to love yourself and learning to level up. And so you've confused this person. This person doesn't understand why you walked away, why you're no longer participating in this cycle that you were willing to participate in before. And so the outcome here is this page of swords with the knight of cups. So this person, I believe, is wanting to 
Um, we'll look in the extended on whether or not they actually do it, but they're wanting to come forward in the right way. They're wanting to come forward, not as the seven of swords, but as the knight of cups, right? To make some kind of a loving gesture or proposal or offer um, that hopefully you will see as reciprocal, creating healing, right? And the Page of Swords for me, he can be somebody who spies or keeps an eye on things. But what I'm feeling in your reading today is that this is the lesson. You know, the Page of Swords is also the student. It's the seeker. You know, I call him Curious George. He, he's, he needs to know. And so he can be a spy or a snoop or he researches or he seeks the answers. And so I think that your person has learned some kind of a lesson through this energy of walking away. And they're realizing now that they feel bereft. They miss you. They feel like you've deserted them. You've, you know, they're feeling isolation, an emotional desert without you. I feel like they're seeking forgiveness. They, and th this is also advice from spirit for you to be willing to give that forgiveness. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. That doesn't mean that you have to tolerate poor behavior, but it really looks to me like in the month of June, this person at least desires to start a new cycle where they've learned the lesson of not showing up in the seven of swords energy. The six of pentacles and its shadow attribute can be breadcrumbing, right? The star always comes in the tarot right after a tower moment. So when I see the star, it, it tells me something as a reader. It tells me that something happened in this adventure here. Look at it. There's like a storm brewing in the background. Um, I think your person is wanting to change. It says, I will ride the tide, change me into one who rides the tide happily, trusting where I'm being led, even when everything doesn't make sense yet. But the seven of cups, it absolutely does not make sense. This person doesn't understand why you changed the dynamic of your interaction with one another. And my guess is with the star, You've done a lot of healing. Underneath the star, by the way, is the strength card. That's self-mastery. And so, you know, it feels to me like whether you meant to or not, maybe you did it with intention, maybe you didn't, but you blocked this person's energy. You withdraw, withdrew emotionally because you were tired of repeating this, this breadcrumbing or the seven of swords activity with this person. Um, and you, you know, with engagement, I, I'm not really feeling like you're going to get a wedding proposal. I just feel like this person didn't engage with you in ways that made you feel like they really wanted to, to see it come to fruition. And so I'm really feeling like you've taught this person some kind of a lesson, whether you meant to or not, you withdrew your energy, you put up these healthy boundaries you acted with integrity. You demanded nothing but action of integrity from this person. You blocked them, whether you did it physically or just spiritually, energetically. And now the tides have turned, right? This has completed a cycle with this person. And they're starting to, to look at their choices. What do, what do I need to change? How do I change, right? Uh, it's labeled choice, instinct, passion, extremes. And there's other choices too, you know, which is, is that seven of swords snake energy or the rose or, you know, going for the money. This person realizes now that perhaps the way they treated you in the past, you kind of allowed it, right? you kind of 
participated in a way that led them to believe they could continue doing it. And I think they did for a while. They rode that tide, right? Now that tide has shifted because you shifted it. And I really do feel like it's you. Now, if it's the other person, accept that and, and look at, at your behavior because this person has put these boundaries up with you because of something that you were doing. If it's you, I don't feel like it's you, but if it is, it's the seven of swords energy. Now, when I take this over to the extended, I'm going to look at this person's, you know, I, I want to look at this person's thoughts about this situation with you. What are their current feelings? You know, what are their intentions now? Because it does look like they've learned a lesson and they're pondering how to bridge the gap because I don't think that they've been communicating. Um, all of the communication cards here feel like it's this King of Swords that made it, made it, expressed it, and the other person kind of closed off to it or lied to themselves or others in order to avoid it. And that was the lesson that needed to be learned in this. And so, you know, forgiveness is really big here. It's being highlighted by spirit, you know, saying that everybody has an opportunity to change. We do have ascension and awakening here. So for some of you, this is kind of a high level soulmate, right? This is somebody that was placed on your path for higher purpose, which is growth, spiritual growth and enlightenment. Um, so we have with the engagement, we have your love life is ascending, right? You're on the ascension to a higher level of commitment. And I think that all of that was lacking. There was no commitment. It was all kind of smoke and mirrors. But I think it was done because of fear of commitment or fear of loss or fear. You know, everybody's fears are different. But somebody in this situation definitely demanded reciprocity, demanded, you know, some kind of solidified intentions for the future. And when they didn't get it, they spiritually ascended and transformed and started asking the right questions. Why am I stuck in a cycle of accepting less than what I deserve? And how can I, I heal from that? The star, how can I heal from that? Um, and, and I don't think that any of you, maybe you did, did it intentionally. You were just tired. You were tired of being breadcrumbed. You were tired of living in an emotional desert. You were tired of, of this person not treating you or, or showing up in a ma matter of integrity and I think source showed you how to transform into a higher version of yourself, actually moving into your masculine energy of, of using an X because feminine energy is receptive. Masculine energy is action oriented. You took action or somebody took action and that action that was taken was moving away from this emotionally withdrawing and it created a change a shift it's it's the world guys it, it literally ended a cycle of this so i'm going to look in the extended at what was the behavior the seven of swords i'm going to look at whether or not this person is really going to make this proposal i'm going to look at the circumstance, you know, I want to look at what they're thinking, feeling, their intentions are. And uh, we're going to dig much deeper into this over the, in the extended, which is a link below that is the Patreon link. It's only $4.44. Unless you are on an awakening ascension journey with a high level soulmate, you might want to consider joining at the 1111. Because in order to clear this karma and move beyond it, we have to start with self, which it's clear here that you have or somebody has. 
if, if you're the one that's the seven of swords, you probably need to, and that would really benefit you. But either way, that's where I do all my high level soulmate twin flame readings. It's where we're doing, we did a hundred day journaling challenge. We're, you know, also currently doing shadow work journaling. So, you know, both of you guys were drawn together. It was magnetic and seductive and it's coming back is what it feels like because it says a magnetic and seductive quality surrounds you at present. Enjoy it. So I really do believe there's a high potential here for this person to integrate this lesson and to actually show up in June with some sort of reciprocity or, or, you know, it's an offer. So we're going to take a look at their intentions. Let's see if they really made the cha change necessary, if they really integrated this lesson. Be careful because passions, when they're, when they run high, you know, let's say you've done a lot of work on yourself and you stood in your authority, you took action you withdrew your energy you know you wanted to end a poor cycle you wanted to heal you want you know you're awakening you're learning to forgive this person and move on possibly thought you were moving on i'm here to tell you your person's changing too both people are changing all right with the adventure it's the journey right ride the tide um you're on a spiritual journey with this person in connection and you're very magnetically drawn to each other. And these are triggers, right? Your behavior triggered them and their behavior triggered you. And that's creating this awakening and ascension energy. I don't think your person was engaging with you in a way that you felt honored you. And so with this card, it says your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. And I do see that your person has that on their heart and mind. But we will look into whether or not they take action on that or if it's just something that they're currently pondering because they are definitely thinking about their options. They want to know how to get back in to your good graces. And that's how, so this is their options. This is them showing up with the choice that they make. Whether or not they do that in June, we'll have to look in the extended. All right. So I told you we're going to keep these nice, short, and sweet this month. Um, I, I'm considering, don't hold me to it because it's summertime. Uh, and I get very busy when my child is not in school. But if I can, I might keep these nice and short at the first of the month and then go and try to do a mid-month, like every two weeks. And if I can keep them short and sweet, I think the energy shifts enough that, that it would be more beneficial to do them every two weeks than to just do them once a month. So we're going to look into that. Don't hold me to it. It's God willing and the creek don't rise, right? But thank you for being here. I am so grateful for you. If this resonated, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to join me over in the extended, please check it out. It is in the description box below. And uh, we're going to pull this apart and really take a look at your person's uh, truest energy because something is shifting big time for you guys. We're going to take a look at what that is. And if you don't want to follow me over there, then I will see you on the next upload. Love you guys. Happy birthday. Namaste.